Hey everyone, it is Heather Hurt with the NRW where nerds rule the world. But of course on Wednesdays, we are new release Wednesday. I am so sorry for being um, absent the last few weeks. It's um, guys, we have a Moon Knight series out right now, a series about and literally centered around mental health and mental illness. The only person that can truly, it's uh, mental health and mental illness is not your fault but it's something that you are responsible for. So with that being said, take care of yourself. Self-care is very important. Um, I don't mean to start this off with the PSA, especially since it's comics, but we do have a moon night out and we should take advantage of this conversation while we can. Um, so with that being said, let's hop on in. Welcome to New Release Wednesday. <laughs> to Wednesdays, everyone. It is Wednesday, April 13th, and we have the third episode of Moon Knight. I'm just going to keep talking about it. I had Batman, I had Moon Knight, can't wait until we can just talk about Lord of the Rings forever, and I mean, y'all just can't get me to shut up, but we have the third episode of Moon Knight out today, and guys, I, I as y'all know, I've seen the first four, and of the first four, number three is my favorite, is we get to talk about things, we get to talk about things we very rarely get to talk about in the world at large, um, but something that comes up very commonly in comics, and that is the, the cyclical nature of abuse um, and how it can manifest into uh, manipulation. And it's just, uh, I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but guys, this, if you haven't seen it yet, please watch the first three episodes of Moon Knight. And once again, number three is so far my favorite, and I just, I cannot stop talking about it. I'm just so excited, but, but, we're here to talk about what's on the racks. So let's talk about what is out on the racks right now at your local comic shop because you are supporting local when you buy comics, right? Right? Okay. So here we go. We're going to start. All right. All right. Y'all, another week with no DC on the list. At least not for me. Um, just remember that there are some really great DC titles. I just don't have them here. A lot of people are really excited about that Flashpoint Zero. That prequel. Um, but it's not on my list. I, I do try to keep you short and sweet. So let's get into it. Let's start with the Marvels. I mean, we've already been doing it this entire episode. Guys, we have been waiting for this one. It was announced two years ago initially, and X-Men 92 is back. X-Men 92, House of 92. Um, if y'all didn't know House of XCII, that is 92 in Roman numerals. Um, for, for those of us didn't, who didn't catch that the, the first time. So it's, it's X-Men 92, House of 92. Um, if you didn't catch it, it's kind of that concept of House of X. House of X. Get it? <laughs> anyway, so, so the 90s are back, guys. The series that you, with that theme song that you still can't get out of your head like you would even want to is back and it is glorious and it is amazing. And honestly, it's probably one of my favorite books so far this year. I'm not going, I'm not even remotely kidding. It is really good. Um, so what we have is we have the Krakoan age, but 30 years ago. Not, not even kidding. It's, it's the same politics. It's, it's current. It's up to date. It's just happening with our favorite animated ninety two team. So you, we have uh, mutant kind coming together to build themselves their own place, their own land, led by Professor X, Magneto, and Moira. No, 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 not that Moira. That would be pretty cool, though, right? Uh, they, but, but Moira is. She's lived a long life and she seems to know a little bit more than she's putting on. And, and it leads to this great, oh, there's so many twists and turns in this book. Even in the first issue, like 
it'll blow your mind. Um, as as a quick aside, I, you know I, I try to be positive in these. I don't want to I don't want to put anything down. But one one very common review for this this issue is that if you were not a fan or if you did not watch the original series, some of this might not really connect with you. Um, the the I love it. I want more of it and I cannot wait for the next issue. But if you were not a fan of the 92 series, or once again, you haven't seen it yet, you should. It is on Disney Plus. Um, you can't, you should, you should watch it. Uh, or you you should, it might not be for you, and that's okay. You might not connect with it. But for the rest of us who love the bright, the shiny, we love the 92 storm. She is still the best. My I love, she's still my favorite. Sorry, Halle Berry. But if you if you love that classic 90s X-Men, but just with today's story, you are, this is gonna blow you away. You love, you can love, uh, you will love it, excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, I totally didn't mention. It is from writer Steve Fox and artist Salvador Espin. Um, I have decided, by the way, just to slide onto the side, uh, because it was just taking a while and I'm just terrible with names, I will list the entire creative team in the description. So please make sure you check down below. Make sure you credit everyone who, who you can. I'm just terrible at names and want to stop making a complete ass of myself and the people who own those names and are doing such great work deserve better. So I'm going, I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet here, but it will all be down there, down there. <laughs> all right. So that's it. That's uh, X-Men X -Men 92, House of 92, number one. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, all right. Electra. She just does not get enough love anywhere. She, she, she does get love, but not enough. It doesn't matter how much you give her, she deserves more. Electra number 100. It is the 100th issue that bears her name. Ugh. Congratulations, Electra, that big number 100. Of course, she has been in many, many, many more than 100 issues. This is just the 100th with her, her name at the top and exclusively her book. Um, from writer, there's, this is actually a, a, a large book. So there's a whole bunch. Uh, Anne Nakenti, 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 Anne Nakenti. There we go. So 15th time was the term. With artist Paul Sequira. Sequira. I'm going to just I actually got like pronunciations and I'm still screwing it up. Like I'm just, I'm so bad at this guys. Uh, Ty Templeton and Sid Coton as uh, those are the artists uh, with many, many others. This is, a, this is a great and amazing and fun book. Um, as we know, Electra has been a spy, an assassin, an Avenger, a hero, a pawn, a mercenary, a blah, blah, blah. She's been everything. But you know what she always will be and always will be the main title for her? She is the strongest woman I'm sorry. Strongest character, badass, dangerous. That's really, it's not really strongest. Badass and dangerous character in the Marvel universe. And she deserves the credit and happy 100th. Um, it has been 41 years since her inception in 91 in Daredevil 168. So happy anniversary, Electra. Go pick up her number 100th issue. Uh, you, you will love it. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of great series and guess what this is only the beginning she's been around for 40 years but girls still going pick up electra 100 all right so let's move into the indies because everyone loves a good indie book especially when one of them is celebrating 30 years happy anniversary image comics 30 years and still kicking they are 30 years young <laughs> wish they could say the same about me but <laughs> but Image exclamation point number one is out this week. It is part of a year long celebration um, with uh, with 12 pieces. It is an anthology series with many, 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 many creatives, including Kyle Higgins, uh, comic legend Jeff Johns, no matter what your opinion of Jeff is, comic legend Jeff Johns, it is what it is. Uh, uh, Brennan Fletcher, Scotty Young, Declan Shelby, Moon Knight, uh, Mirka Andal Andolfo, Andolfo, excuse me, uh, with artists Andre Muti, uh, Babstar, 
just it's, it's, it's just check down below. It is there there and this is this is only a small piece. This is an anthology series, which means that the creative teams will change almost every issue. Almost every issue. Um, the, the, this anthology series will have standalones, many ongoings, ongoings that'll, that'll take up the entire 12 point, uh, 12 issue series, um, including the first two 12, uh, 12 issue, 12 part series. Wow, it's been a minute, can you tell? Um, the first one, of course, by Jeff Johns and artist Andre Muti uh, called The Blizzard. And the second by uh, Fat Girl fame, uh, Brendan Flesher and Babs Tarr called Red Stitches. These will grow, these will encompass the entire 12 issues. So you can just start here, definitely pick it up. Um, there are also this this issue also begins the uh, the first part of a few uh, three part series. Um, and then there's also some they're kind of using this as a magazine anthology. So we're also getting some first looks at some upcoming series, including Moon Knight, Declan Shelby's uh, upcoming Old Dog, and an original comic strip from Fuck Fairyland. It's only I hate Fairyland in the U.S. and it's deeply disappointing. Fuck Fairyland, Scotty Young. Um, so if this wasn't already enough of a reason to grab it, if that long list of names was not already enough, then then I'm telling you to go buy it. Like it's it's not. It is worth every penny and the entire series. It's uh, great content, great stories. Go pick up image number one. Do it. Sign up, subscribe. All righty, the next one. It's a Steve Niles book, y'all. 30 Days of Night. Do I don't even need to tell you the name. If there's a Steve Niles book on the shelf, you should be picking it up. Like it's just have Steve Niles on your subscription. Like seriously. Do it. I think I've talked about Nosferatu Wars on here and I'm how angry I am about that one shot. Anyway, um, A Town Called Terror, number one. All right, uh, from Steve Niles and Zeman Kudransky. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it wrong. It's down there, the spelling's down there. Many apologies, I can see my lips again. <laughs> um, so let, let's, let's paint a picture, shall we? It's a dark night. We are in the middle of a morgue. Uh, and and there's pieces of a body on a on an embalming table. Now, in, in most of these cases, like in you know, like crime documentaries or you know, CSI and stuff like that, because we've all done, we've all seen that. It's usually people are ta being taken apart. They're not being stitched together. Especially when you're not this evil. You, you don't even want to see it if it's like you're an evil immortal being. And then arises said being from the table. But where this truly begins isn't necessarily on that embalming table. It starts with the kidnapping of, of that being's estranged son. Henry West is kidnapped from his own home right in front of his wife, Julie's eyes. Like just ripped away from his life. And she has and there, nothing is left behind. She has no evidence to take the, to the police. This is just take, he, her, her husband is just taken away from her and there's nothing she can do about it. And when Henry wakes up, he finds himself in a very, a very familiar place, his childhood home. What secrets was Henry keeping from his wife? And what horrors are lurking in his childhood home? You, you're, yeah, you're already, I, I know you have already put your phone down in, in the side table of your car and you are driving to your comic shop. I know it. Because you are picking up a town called Terra number one right now. You're doing it. All right, last one. Last one, and it's from Aftershock Comics. Once again, if you are not reading any Aftershock books, you are missing out. You need Aftershock books. They are so good. Um, true, true heart of creator-owned kind of style. Love Aftershock. Uh, Midnight Rose, number one. So 
let's talk about how that dude who created Thanos is writing a horror book. I'll wait for you to pick it up. Jim Starlin. Jim freaking Starlin is writing a horror book. Ah, well, he wrote a horror book with uh, Nicole Jelnick. Once again, I apologize for how awful I am at names. Midnight Rose is a frightening tale of loneliness, love, want, greed, and the monster that those feelings create. That darkness deep inside and what grows out of it. I could talk horror comics every day of the week and I still, oh. This book is beautiful, but what, what's crazy is that it's like really soft too. So definitely pick up Midnight Rose number one. I mean, when, it, when I said, dude who created Thanos wrote a horror book, you should have already stopped watching this and I've gone, so. But that's the end of our, that is the end of our picks this week. I am so sorry it has been so long. I'm so ready to get back into this. Pray to the comic gods that my finals over the next few weeks go well and that depression can be broken in some way, shape, or form. Um, enjoy Moon Knight. Enjoy comics. Pick up your books. Please go to your comic shop and pick up your books, especially if you're a sub. Just remember, books are paid for ahead of time. You, Your comic retailer needs you to come pick them up. Pick them up. Okay. Well, we will see you next Wednesday. Enjoy your comics. Pick up some amazing books this week. Hit subscribe so that when I randomly do put out new 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 release Wednesdays, you are you are aware of them. <laughs> uh, follow us on all of the socials at the NRW on TikTok, and of course, because we still own Instagram uh, at New Release Wednesday on Instagram. You can follow me at Nerd is a Heather on Twitter and at Heather is a nerd on TikTok and Instagram. Um, as if you need to come in and tell me, please, please DM me any questions about comic retail. I'm more than happy to talk to you, especially in regards to how infrequently I do this. So please, please follow, please reach out whenever you have questions and you have a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you.